Ben, we're going to give this just about a minute here um, so that attendees can uh, join us, dial in, do what they need to do, and then we'll go ahead and get started and I'll kick us off. Great. Sounds good. We're just going to get our slides up here and running. Excellent. All right, we are good to go ahead and get started. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome. My name is Aubrey McLaughlin. I'm the director of events for the Elizabeth Dole Foundation. We are so excited that you're able to join us today for our episode of Caregiver Community Connection. It is our C3 webinar series provided by the presented by the Elizabeth Dole Foundation and powered by our partners at the Wounded Warrior Project and the U.S. Department of Veterans Affairs. Our goal in this series is to bring military, veteran, and family caregivers engaging content on important topics and provide opportunities for peer-to-peer -peer connection and support. Today's webinar, Let's Take Care of You, Tapping into Whole Health Resources, features Dr. Ben Kligler, in May, Dr. Klickler served as our keynote speaker for what we call our Spotlight Webinar Series, which is a monthly program that we host with the VA and Phillips and addresses needs and services from the VA. So last month we focused on whole health resources and Dr. Klickler graciously offered to come back for a second session to demo some of these services and address any questions or comments about them. So Dr. Kligler is a board certified family physician who has worked as a clinician, educator, researcher, and administrative leader in the field of complementary and integrative medicine for 25 years. He is the executive director of the Veterans Health Administra Administration Office of Patient-Centered Care and Cultural Transformation. Dr. Kligler, I'd like to welcome you back and we're really glad to have you with us. Before we get started, I just want to mention to all attendees that this is a recorded broadcast and we are always open to suggestions on future topics to discuss and speakers to feature in this series. If you have any ideas, please feel free to send them our way. We have a lot of demos and information to cover today, but we will be taking questions at the end of the webinar and we will be conducting a few polls throughout our episode. So please feel free to interact and share with us your own goals or struggles on whole health. We'll be engaging with you throughout today's session in the chat box. In order to submit any questions, please feel free to use the Q&A question box located in the Zoom control panel. I'll be taking note of all the questions and we'll be sure to get them answered live during today's portion of that programming. For those of you who are joining us on Facebook Live through our Hidden Heroes Caregiver Community page, welcome. We are so glad to have you with us as well. Please submit any of your questions by commenting on the video on the Facebook page. Also for the polls, uh, if you'd like to participate in those, we will be taking your answers also in the comment box of the video. And as a special bonus, we will be awarding four attendees during today's episode. Today's winners will be receiving a $25 Amazon gift card and a Wounded Warrior Project journal. So stay tuned, we'll be announcing our winners throughout today's session. And now with further ado, let's talk about whole health and taking care of you. So please join me in welcoming Dr. Kligler for some fantastic resources available to you as caregivers. Dr. Kligler, feel free to take it away. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Aubrey. And um, thank you for having me again. I really enjoyed uh, last time I got to speak with you all and uh, looking forward to sharing some more. So, um, what I want to talk about, and it, for some of you all who were, um, first of all, forgive my hair. As everybody knows, it's been a long time <laughs> since it was possible to get a haircut. And every time I go on a, on a Zoom or other video call, I'm like, oh, looking even worse today. So um, <laughs> don't, don't hold it against me. Um, 
So having said that, um, I know some of you were probably here the last time I spoke. And so I am going to go over a little bit of the same material, but I think uh, no harm in that because I think, uh, at least from my point of view, all of this is uh, things that I have to be reminded of or remind myself of every day. So, um, so that's it. I'll just plunge ahead. I have some new resources to show you as well. And then I'm really uh, looking forward to answering your questions. Um, so um, what I'm going to talk about is this idea of whole health. I'm going to very specifically talk about some specific resources that we have out there online now for you all to um, help take care of yourselves, whether you're veterans, caregivers, family members, uh, things you can do on your own at home, skills you can develop, uh, things that hopefully the pandemic gives us an opportunity to get started with that then we'll take on and, and move forward with uh, forever. Uh, this whole idea of learning how to take care of ourselves without necessarily having to, being able to go to the doctor, being able to go to the medical facility, there's so much we can do for ourselves to kind of get out ahead of the uh, challenges we face and to uh, just help set ourselves up to really move forward. So everything I'm going to show you uh, is in the context of this idea called whole health. And whole health is, you see the definition in front of you, it's an approach to healthcare that empowers and equips people to take charge of their health and well-being and live their life to the fullest. So typically, a healthcare system like the VA is uh, really excellent at managing diseases. And VA, as you all probably know, actually is one of the best in the country, uh, much better in some regards than some of the private sector systems at addressing diseases, whether it's cancer, heart disease, diabetes, whatever it is. But an amazing thing that VA has taken on over the last few years is this idea that not only does the health system have to help fight disease, but the health system has to help promote health and well-being for all of its clients, customers, whatever you want to call them. So for all veterans who are using the VA, their caregivers, their families, our job is not just to come when there's a problem and do the surgery or provide the medication. Our job is to teach people skills, help people gain skills, so that they can really move themselves forward towards what's important to them in their life. And that's the idea of whole health. So what do we mean specifically by whole health? Well, uh, it starts with this idea of reflection. And coming out of reflection, looking at yourself and asking yourself some questions, what are you going to do? Or what are you going to do in your life? There's a certain amount that we can do for you. Or there's a certain amount that others can do for us. But then there's a lot of things that we have to do for ourselves. So the first question we ask people or encourage people to ask themselves, what matters most to you in your life right now? What's giving your life meaning? What's giving it purpose? I think in a way this pandemic and this sort of crazy time that we're in has really forced a lot of us to reflect on what's most important in our lives. What is it we want our health for? So that's step one. We really wanna have that conversation, not just how do I control my diabetes, better, but why do I want to control it? What is it I want to be around for? Maybe it's my granddaughter's wedding. Maybe it's a half marathon I want to run. Maybe it's um, some accomplishment that's important to me in my work or in my studies. What is it that's really going to drive me meaning, aspiration, and purpose in my life? So then once you've figured that out, well, what is it that's going to get me there? What are the skills that I need to develop or tools that I need to have in my toolbox to help me go towards what matters. And this is where we use what we call the circle of health. And so you'll see in the circle of health, there's me at the center, or that should be you actually, or any of us. And then around that me are these eight domains of basically what things that go into making us more or less healthy, more or less strong, more or less able to move towards what matters. So you'll see things there like working your body. So are you exercising? Are you moving regularly? You'll see things like family, friends. Are you connecting in your life? Are you feeling isolated socially, making the connections that you want? Spirit and soul. Is that something that used to be important to you? Maybe you used to be part of a spiritual community and you've lost touch with that, but that feels like something you need to strengthen. And you can see going around the circle, all the different uh, skills and domains that go into making us healthy making us strong, making us able to move towards what we want. And you can see that all that's obviously in the context of family, community, uh, environment. So the way we do it in Whole Health is look around that circle and you all can do this for yourselves or you can do it later. 
uh, by going to the website I'm going to show you. Think about what are the areas that you might need to work on? What are the areas that you're already strong in? Maybe you are eating really well at this point and you're happy with how you're eating and you don't have to change anything, but maybe you're not moving much or maybe you're not getting enough sleep. Where are the areas you need to work on? And then what are the tools? What are the skills that you need to help you move towards being stronger in those areas so that you can actually step forward into what matters to you? And I think, I don't mean to make it sound easy, this idea of self-management, self-care, being empowered. This is not something we do overnight. This is not something uh, that is, you know, snap your fingers and it's done. It's more like a philosophy or an orientation or a commitment. It's more like a journey that you start on and, and um, then it's really a journey that you walk the rest of your life. And I think the great thing about it is it's, it's up to you. So once you set yourself on the path of saying, I'm gonna really put forward, what is it that matters to me? What gives my life meaning? And then you ask yourself, well, what are the skills? You're not gonna do all that overnight, but you can start to work your way through it a little bit at a time. And it just changes the perspective from just looking at, well, what are the problems I have? What is it I have to worry about? It's really, what do I want? What do I want out of my life? Where do I wanna be going? So the circle of health and this whole health model, I think is a really potentially a great tool. So um, now down to kind of the real skills Then I've been talking about this big philosophy, this context. So let's just try out a brief skill right now. Um, some of you have probably done this, super simple, a little bit similar to what I did last time. But then again, um, I do mindfulness meditation and I've been doing the same thing every day for 20 minutes for <laughs> I can't even tell you how many years. So just the fact that it may be familiar uh, doesn't take away from the potential effectiveness. So basically we're just gonna breathe together for a minute or so. So the first thing you do is get comfortable in your chair or wherever you may be, if you're standing or strolling or, or lying down, wherever you are, just let yourself settle into your chair. Take a second to notice any areas of your body that are a little tense or need a little bit of uh, sort of releasing or jiggling around or, or just let yourself relax a little bit. Let your shoulders drop down away from your ears where we often keep them. And what we're gonna do is we're just gonna do a little bit of breathing, but we're not gonna do breathing the way we often think about it. When someone says, take a deep breath, what do we do? We do a big breath in and then we let it out, <clears throat> excuse me. But the way we're gonna do breathing is we're actually not gonna focus on the inhale. We're gonna focus on the out breath. So we're gonna take in a breath, but then when we let it out, we're gonna make it long. Different from what you usually do. You're gonna make it long and you're even gonna take a second to notice the pause at the end of that out breath before you breathe in again. That pause, that little quiet moment. So let's just try that a few times at your own pace, breathing however deeply is comfortable for you, but really, focusing on the out breath and on lengthening the out breath. So let's just try that for three or four breaths. And I, no matter how many times I do it, it never ceases to amaze me how just three or four long out breaths, it flips a switch in my nervous system. It does something that quiets down that rushing river of thoughts and feelings and worries and hopes and concerns and fears and plans that's going through our heads constantly. It just turns a switch a little bit, quiets it down for a minute and in particular, if I'm able to focus on that tiny pause at the end of the out breath, there's just this little space there. And it's hard to describe. You may have to just practice and experience it to know what I'm talking about, but there's this little space there where it's quiet. And suddenly, because you focused on the out breath, because you've tuned your nervous system to that frequency for a minute, there's just a little bit of quiet that you might not generally have access to. So, Great thing about your breath is you never can lose it or misplace it as long as you're alive. It's always with you. 
um, if you need some other kind of tool or, 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 or strategy that you can't remember where you put it in your house and then you need it and you can't find it, but then suddenly if it's your breath, well, all it takes is to remember. So I'd really encourage you all to just try that. That long out breath is a key practice in so many different kinds of um, skills that involve finding a quieter place inside, meditation, yoga, Tai Chi, just so many different cultures have found that long out breath to be a really useful tool to just very quickly flip that switch and let yourself access a different, just a different piece of your, of your reality. So I'd really encourage you to give that a try. So now what I'm gonna do is show you a few of the online resources that we have available to you that um, uh, I hope you'll, you'll um, take advantage of and um, consider tapping into uh, when you have a chance. So um, let's see, getting, leaving my slideshow. Okay. And um, I hope what I'm doing now is going over to, all right, new share, I'm getting close. <laughs> doing better than I did last time. <laughs> Um, okay, and this is where I'm going. So uh, you'll find this easier than, uh, than I do, um, I'm sure. Um, so let's go ahead and share. And um, I have some of these sites bookmarked. So the first one I want to show you, which hopefully will come up now, is um, the wholehealth.gov website. And um, Audrey, can you just confirm for me, uh, give me a chat or a thumbs up that you're actually seeing that now. I can see it. <laughs> can you make it a little bit bigger? Make, make it bigger. Little... Gotcha. Yeah, perfect. All right. There we go. Okay. A little better than last time. Okay. So this is your go-to place. And all you have to do to find this place is uh, Google wholehealth.gov. And, you know, the website is va.gov slash wholehealth. But if you can't remember that, just Google wholehealth.gov or wholehealthva. It will bring you to this website. And this website is really kind of a go-to because it has amazing amount of resources. And I'm gonna show you some from here, uh, but I'm not even gonna have the chance to show you all of them. So just as an example, um, I talked about the circle of health. So if that was interesting to you, you can go to the website and um, you can learn all about the circle of health. There are videos for you to watch. There are tools for exploring each of the domains and, and you can tackle that on your own if that's something that you're interested in. Um, there are all kinds of resources here. How do you find whole health at the VA? How do you get involved? How do you, uh, what are some of the different kinds of complementary therapies that you might find interesting? What is acupuncture for? Just lots of things for you to learn when you have a minute and you're interested. Um, but the main thing I'm going to uh, show you now is something that we call the hashtag live whole health campaign. And this is something that we started basically in response to the pandemic so that we could um, really make the resources available to people that, that they need, the, the way they need to take care of themselves at home. So um, what you can do is you, from that website, you can click just where I just did, which is the self-care series. And that will take you to something called the VA Vantage Point blog. This is a blog that VA puts out every day that's sent out to several million veterans around the country, but it's also something you can access even if you're not signed up to it. And two to three times a week, we are putting up a blog post as part of the hashtag Live Whole Health campaign, which basically provides you with a new tool for you to try out. Uh, you obviously don't have to try all of these. Some of them will suit some people more than other people. Uh, there's about 30 plus different tools on here now, and there are more coming out every week. And so what you'll find here is a little explanation of um, what is the sort of activity of today. And then you'll actually find a resource, a video or a podcast that you can tune into. So just to give you an example, uh, let's take a look at this one. So acupunct acupressure for stress relief. So let's just say this caught my fancy and I decided to click on here. Well, that would take me to the Vantage Point blog post about acupressure. And you can see down here, there's lots of information, et cetera. Um, but you can read that, you cannot read that, whatever suits you. But then 
really what we hope you'll do is then access the video or the resource that's on there so that you have a chance to actually experience it. So I'm just going to let you guys listen to this for a minute. I'm here to share with you five easy acupressure points for calming stress. Acupressure has been practiced for thousands of years and it is known to be helpful for stress relief, pain, and wellness. If you are unsure about using acupressure, let me just take a little bit ahead. Provider, She's going to show you some of the points you can actually use. Care provider for advice. Let's begin. The first point we're going to use is in the pocket of our upper ears, located in this triangle. Simply press your finger into that point against your head and massage gently for about 30 seconds. The second point is right in the middle of your forehead. Okay, I'm going to stop this now and not take too much of our time on that one. Uh, some of you out there have probably had acupuncture. It's hard to get acupuncture right now because of the limitations on face-to-face -face visits. But what we've been finding is that a lot of veterans, and not only veterans, but families, caregivers, are getting tremendous benefit out of our acupuncturists going online or on video and teaching them how to do acupressure points on their own. Uh, it sounds so simple, but it's really potentially very effective and really encourage you guys to take a look at that. It's a great tool for self-care, can help with stress, can help with headaches, can help with sleep, etc. So let me show you another one. Um, here's one that's more sort of taking a quiet moment, moments of pause. So just show you this one again. Here you see the blog post, here you see the video. Just take a look at this for a second. Hi, I'm Dr. Robert Eric Dinenberg, whole health physician at the St. Louis VA. And this is five minutes of mindfulness. When you're ready, find your dignified pose for this practice. Your back is straight, but not stiff. If your feet are flat on the ground, just find yourself in a comfortable position. Let's begin with the feet. Beginning here, checking in, observing what it feels like to have our feet on the ground in this present moment. Mindfulness is present moment attention without judgment. So there's no right or wrong. Again, I, oh, I could listen to the waves all day. I don't even need the voice personally, but um, that just gives you an idea. So uh, again, some people are going to uh, really gravitate towards one of these or another. If you find one that you like, do it every day. Do it every other day. Do it with your family. Um, I'll just show you one more because I think uh, one thing that I didn't talk enough about last time is the importance of movement and exercise uh, in keeping healthy during this kind of time. I think some of us are used to doing particular things to stay mobile and, and whether that's working with a PT, uh, going to the gym, uh, going running someplace where we can no longer get to. Um, but I think finding ways to exercise during this time is a really, really important Hello, everyone. Uh, part of staying healthy. Milgren, and I'm a whole health coach as well as a yoga instructor at the St. Louis VA. And today I'm going to guide you through um, a short chair yoga practice. So if you're able to find a space in your house where you can clear out a little room and perhaps find a chair, um, preferably one without wheels <laughs> so you don't roll away. Attention to the breath. So simply noticing the feeling of your body breathing in. I'm gonna go ahead a little bit more. And exhale, ease in. We'll take one more breath, inhale. And I just wanna point out this is chair and yoga. Exhale. This does not require you to be a, a 50 year practitioner of yoga or anything like that. that. It's just a very and straightforward, simple way to do exhale, some moving that same twist in the opposite direction. without leaving the comfort of your home. So uh, as you can see, lots and lots of resources there. And I would just really encourage you all to um, take a look at that. Uh, you can just Google hashtag live whole health vantage point if you'd like to do that, or you can um, uh, go to our website, uh, va.gov slash whole health. Uh, however you want to find it, really not hard to find. And I would just really encourage you all to, um, to take a look at that. So um, I'm going to just go back now and share a few more resources. I talked about our website. That's really your go-to. 
Um, and if you scroll down, one thing I did want to point out, if you're on that Vantage Point blog site and you don't see anything you like on the first screen, just scroll down to the bottom, you'll reach the next and the next, and there's quite a lot of resources there. Here's just a few more of them. Um, I did want to also let you all know that uh, that same resource is on the VA Facebook page. If you prefer that, it's on the VA Instagram page. Both of those places, you can access links to the same resources. So if you're suited more to one or another, those platforms, uh, feel free. You should be able to find it. Uh, then I want to talk about one more resource that I think is very timely and important, and I think in particularly useful because it's an app. Uh, this is something called the COVID Coach, and it was developed by VA Mental Health and a number of other offices to just give you some handy tools for helping get through uh, this crazy time that none of us have experienced before. Uh, you can find this in uh, the App Store or Google Play, all the normal places you find apps, you can put it on your phone. And basically, this you'll see right here is the front page. It's about tools really, to help yourself. So a lot of the types of things I just shared with you, um, deep breathing, body scan, nice sounds, etc., you can access through this app, so you can have them anytime. And it's a handy way to just take this with you wherever you happen to be. The other nice thing about this app is it does have direct connection to all the sort of crisis support resources that VA still has and, and uh, is, is really uh, um, making available to you. So uh, I'd encourage you all to take a look at that COVID Coach app and see if you think you might um, find it useful. I also want to stress that the um, Veterans Crisis Line is still available 24-7. Basically, VA has never stopped during this time period providing the same day uh, easy access to mental health support that we always commit ourselves to try. So the Crisis Line is one way. Uh, another way is you could access mental health services at your local VA anytime. Emergency departments are open. Uh, same day access via telehealth is still available to everybody. So just want people to remember there are some things that a tool, a strategy, uh, something we learn to do for ourselves or a family member can do for us can really get us through a moment. And then there's other times when we really need more than that. And I just really want to stress that in addition to providing those self-management tools, to help us be better equipped, VA is also still here for you in the same way that it, uh, that it always is to provide direct care if you need it. So having said all that, I think I've uh, come to the end of my uh, little speech here and I hope you found it useful and I would love to hear questions. Awesome, thank you so much, Dr. Quigler. I will say I did the breathing exercise and I um, was so relaxed I almost fell asleep. So. Um, that really helped me out a lot. So these are definitely some practical tools uh, and resources that you can do anywhere at any time. Um, we're going to get to questions in just a minute. Before I do that, we have a couple of polls. We wanted to get feedback um, from our attendees today about uh, their self-care and, and how often they use it. So our first poll I'm launching here right now is... Um, just asking our attendees about um, during this time, during COVID, uh, have you found yourself using self-care resources more often than usual, less often than usual, um, or about the same um, as before? So I uh, wanted just to take a moment to gather some of those responses. In the meantime, we do have two winners, um, the first two winners for today that are going to be receiving a $25 Amazon gift card and the Wounded Warrior Project Journal. So I'd like to congratulate Don Hamlin and Betty Bergmark. Uh, thank you guys both so much for joining us today. We'll be reaching out to connect with you in the chat box to get your email address, uh, as well as mailing addresses so we can get those prizes sent out to you uh, in the next couple of days. So congratulations to Don and Betty. Um, I'll give this uh, poll another minute here to collect some responses. In the meantime, Dr. Quigler, I do have a couple of questions that have come in. Um, one being, uh, can you talk a little bit about the arts and humanities as they relate to whole health? So things like visual arts or music or uh, writing uh, workshops, are those resources that are also available or are there any suggestions that you have to point people in those directions? Yeah, great. Thank you for raising that. And, and it, uh, I do just want to, it makes me realize 
uh, I needed to say that the few things I was able to mention, they're just the beginning. They're just a few examples. And so I don't want to give uh, the impression in any way that there aren't a hundred other really valuable ways to, to find ways to, to take care of yourself, to, to get in touch with what's important to you in your life. And so definitely music, arts, writing, um, really, really important as part of that. Um, I don't, I mean, just to be honest, we haven't emphasized those in this particular series. Um, I know that there are some outside groups. Uh, as one example, there's an amazing group called Operation Song, which actually it's a nonprofit. They uh, sort of are out of Nashville and were born there, but they work with people basically to help people put their stories into music. And then I don't know for sure if and, and what they're doing online, but I imagine they might be moving in that direction. So just one thing to look at. It's great to look at just even if you, uh, even if they don't have something to actually participate in, but just to sort of become aware of it, it's a pretty neat project. But I think that's a great question and it makes me want to uh, look into with uh, the people doing the programming for this, you know, what could we do? Could we do a, a, a little writing prompt in one of these videos? Could we do uh, uh, something more, uh, more music? I think that's a great idea. And I think probably we haven't emphasized it enough so far in the resources. Thank you so much. Um, we have collected uh, a large majority of folks who have voted in the polling. So thank you so much for participating in those. So it looks like the majority of our uh, folks joining us today have found themselves, gosh, it's almost like a dead even split with 45% uh, of the people today using self-care more often than usual and 44% using it just about the same. So we have a lot of folks here that are very tapped into the resources that um, are being provided this time. So a uh, huge kudos to you guys and we encourage you guys to keep using those resources. Um, one question that we had uh, relates to um, quiet places. So a lot of these exercises, especially some of the ones that you demoed, um, mention finding a, a quiet place and, and recognizing the uniqueness of this time. The homes might not be the quietest place um, that, that folks can find with kids and, and distractions and all that stuff. What can this person do? Or are there any suggestions to make a place a little bit more quiet or to go somewhere or something like that? Yeah, also a great question. Um, I think one thing to do, which isn't always easy, but maybe is a positive thing anyway, is first of all, to just let people know that you're taking a few minutes, especially if there's kids involved, please, a few minutes, you know, is all I need. And um, without seeming <laughs> too personal, um, the bathroom is sometimes a great place in a home for a little peace and quiet. You know, obviously everybody's home is different, <laughs> but I will say that um, without, again, uh, too much personal information, that's something uh, as a parent, I certainly relied on <laughs> when my kids were young. Um, I think an obvious solution, which costs a little bit of money, but which I know a lot of people do find useful is headphones as well. You can get a relatively inexpensive pair of headphones that still has a noise canceling function. And you know that can really help if you're just looking for quiet. Um, I'd give you those ideas and then I'd welcome anybody to throw into the chat box ideas that you have, because I think that's a problem all of us have. Our, our homes are a little more crowded and chaotic uh, than usual for the most part. So, uh, but there's a few ideas. Absolutely, thank you so much for sharing that. Um, one other question uh, coming in uh, as it relates to the COVID Coach app, uh, is it gonna be available after? COVID is over. Is this something that is here to stay or is it say? Yeah, um, uh, absolutely. Uh, it, available uh, forever and, uh, and a really good tool. Maybe they'll decide to change the name <laughs> after the uh, pandemic is over, but um, absolutely going to be available forever. And so is the rest of this set of resources. So the hashtag Live Whole Health campaign, everything that's on our website, uh, all this is going to stay out there and be available to you indefinitely. And I think I was great to see that uh, 45 or 44 percent of people are doing self-care more than usual because if we're doing that now and we've discovered that there's a reason to do that, why should we stop once things start to move a little bit back towards you know the life we're accustomed to? So 
Um, I know just, again, even speaking for myself, I, I mentioned that I've had a once a day meditation practice for you know decades really in the morning, but kind of because I realized I, I needed a little bit extra boost during this time and also because I've been in a house with eight people for most of the uh, past three and a half months, uh, which I'm not accustomed to, I added a really brief evening, like just a five minute quiet sit. And I have to say, I'm not giving that up after the pandemic is over. And to, to sort of, you know, make a, a, a healthy future habit out of a, a forced opportunity, I think it's a good way to look at it. And so I'd really encourage those 44% of folks, like, don't think of this as something you're just doing temporarily. Think of it as something you're going to keep doing as we move forward. Absolutely. I could not agree more. And that's, that's a couple of, of uh, there's a couple of things that I've taken on in the last couple of months that I will be continuing to take on even when uh, we get back to normal, whatever the normal will be um, and whenever that will be. Um, how does the VA provide virtual Tai Chi classes? Um, so uh, there, I mean, there's obviously the online brief videos that, that we showed you. So in that Vantage Point blog, there are a number of, you know, five to 10 and some even a bit longer on our website, um, uh, basically Tai Chi video classes that you can do and follow. Um, but lots of VAs are also providing um, Tai Chi classes via um, telehealth or via what's called Video Connect which is the um, technology that's being used now for kind of people accessing VA services from home. Um, I think the best way to access that because you can't, it's not necessarily offered off of a national platform. It's offered regionally through either your local VA or another VA in your region. So I think the best way to access that if you really want a Tai Chi class is to get in touch with folks at your VA that are running the whole health program. Almost every VA now has a person who's in charge of the whole health program and they will be able to steer you if they are doing tele Tai Chi or if they, uh, somebody else in their vision is doing it, they'll be able to steer you in the right direction. Part of why we haven't been able to do that off a national platform is we offer something nationally and if a thousand people sign the bandwidth right away shoots it down. So we've left that kind of more intensive offering for facilities and, and regional networks to offer because uh, to offer it from a national level is just too, um, I guess you could say bandwidth intensive. So, um, but, but many, many, many facilities out there are offering them. So I would, I would, I would get in touch with your local. That makes complete sense. I'm assuming also those local VAs and, and business would be the ones to look to, we had some questions about in-person uh, classes resuming, and I'm assuming that that would also be the best um, uh, to direct folks to is, is checking in with our local VA, because it's right. everywhere. Absolutely, and just to speak to that a little, so VA has a plan called Moving Forward that a lot of work has gone into where um, it's basically providing guidance for how facilities will reopen services and at what pace and what in what order and for who, so things like even elective surgeries or um, uh, oh, you know, face-to-face uh, -face mental health services, et cetera. And uh, it's going to be highly individualized from VA to VA, obviously, because the pandemic is in a different place all around the country. And there are places where it's still very intensively spreading and other places where it's really calmed down. So, um, mm -hmm. so you will find that all the VAs across the country in one form or another are moving forward with offering more face-to-face -face services. Um, but it's very variable depending on the location. I will say face-to-face -face, uh, yoga, Tai Chi classes, meditation classes are probably a little further down the road in terms of yeah. when they open up because anything that involves a group of people in the same room, as you can imagine, is a little trickier. Um, some places are already opening back up, for example, to face-to-face -face acupuncture, massage, chiropractic services. Obviously, that's one person in one room with one provider. So, um, again, there's a lot of variables that go into, but, but, you know, your VA will be able to tell you what specifically they're doing and what they expect to be doing over the next few months. Thank you so much. Um, we had a question here regarding the uh, COVID coach app. Um, it's 
this person is unable to locate it through the app store, but should they be looking somewhere else? I know we, we demoed a video of that. Where can that yeah. person be found? Um, let's see, do you wanna, should we go back and see if I can show that video? I left it out because I was getting short on time, but you wanna- Absolutely, and, we, can, okay. we can definitely do that. Okay, let's give that a try and <laughs> I'll see how it goes. <laughs> okay. I'll walk uh, you through it if we need to. Yeah, here we go. So um, let's see, where's, uh, I gotta go back to Chrome and- oops. While you're doing that, I'll also launch our second poll that we have today. Um, we want to understand from our audience, what forms of self-care have you tried? Um, maybe you've tried all of these that are up. We have yoga, meditation, acupressure, mindful breathing, or other. And so we'll take a minute here before we get that video loaded, just to collect some of those answers. Okay. Let's see. Uh, Aubrey, you seeing something here? Uh, not yet. Okay. Oh. Did you do your green screen share screen button? Um, I did my green share screen button and then I went to, um, oh, I see. I didn't open the Chrome window. So hold on one second. Perfect. It's all right. And so we have this poll up here. Folks can um, select as many that apply to you. Um, uh, for these options. So we, we definitely want to hear uh, the types of self-care that folks have been into lately. We have some indoor rowing coming in in the chat. That's really cool. I like that. Excellent. You getting this, Audrey? Yep. Mm -hmm. There you go. App Store, Google Play. I think those are your options for where you can get it. Um, okay. And then if not, um, you can probably Google COVID Coach uh, v VA and there may be a place to download it uh, as well from somewhere on the VA, um, on the VA web. Uh, but oh, it yes. looks like App Store and Google Play are the places. Excellent. Perfect. Thank you so much. Um, we'll take just a quick break here. I'm going to share these results. We do have a lot more questions coming in, um, but we do have um, a lot of folks that are joining today have uh, done some mindful breathing, which is excellent to see. A lot of meditation. Um, we have about half of you that have, that have done yoga. Uh, another half has done other, so that could be a lot of different things like the indoor or rowing. So um, very cool stuff. Only about a quarter of you have tried acupressure before. So I know we demoed that earlier today. It might just be a, a fun thing to try uh, on your own time. And then uh, we do have actually two more winners that have just come in um, for another $25 Amazon gift card and a Wounded Warrior Project journal. So want to congratulate Robert Darling and Vanessa Engelhard. Congratulations to both of you. Thank you guys both so much for joining. We're gonna again connect with you two in the chat, get your email, get your mailing address and make sure we get those prizes to you. So congratulations. Um, we do have a lot more questions as I mentioned. So we'll take uh, the remaining time for those. Just as a reminder, if you do have a question, make sure that you are um, putting it in the question and answer box that is in the Zoom control panel. Um, and we'll be able to get to as many as we possibly can. Aubrey, I just wanted to share, I just uh, Googled COVID coach and what yeah. you get is the um, VA uh, PTSD program site, which has a nice page of that. That's the program that helped put it together. And uh, it has a nice overview of the app and then it tells you uh, other options in terms of where you can go. So. Oh, excellent. Perfect. Um, one question um, that I would like to, to bring to you, uh, Dr. Kligler, is what advice can you give for caregivers that are trying to coach their warriors into trying some of these new age therapies, uh, like yoga, like meditation, that maybe would be considered a certain way um, for folks that are a little bit more uh, 
older and they're and they've been in uh um we have someone who's veteran is weary of anything called yoga so i'm wondering if there are any strategies or tactics that you can suggest um to some of those caregivers to have their warriors try something new right and that's that's they're not the first ones to encounter that because <laughs> i think when yoga was first coming on in the va um, many places found they actually could not call it yoga. Uh, they had to call it something like uh, warrior movement or you know something else that that didn't bring all the baggage that sometimes the term yoga might bring. Um, so I think there's no harm in calling it uh, movement, stretching, flexibility. Um, you know, there's a lot of overlap. I mean, you can see a chair exercise session that is very similar to a chair yoga session, a lot of the same movements. So uh, I don't think there's any, uh, unless someone wants to and they're really getting into it, there, there isn't really a need to call it yoga per se. You can just talk about the need to move a little, the need to encourage flexibility and, and you can distract them when the word yoga comes up on the screen and uh, just really talk about it as gentle exercise. So, um, that would be my suggestion. I think in meditation, um, that's a really individual thing. So um, I know people, for example, where um, uh, referencing um, prayer was actually a good way to get somebody to start to think about meditation. Like, you know how sometimes when you take a minute to pray and you're calming yourself and breathing, you feel a certain way. Well, sometimes just doing the breathing can help get you to the same place. And that depends. That's only if it's somebody who has that experience already in their life that that means something to. But um, I think the labels are really extraneous. I really don't think they're important. I, you know, I think what's important is just giving it a try. So I really think you should feel comfortable dropping the labels and, and using whatever kind of reference points or language you feel is going to be familiar and comfortable for your, for your veteran. I think that's, that's the best way to go. The, the labels aren't important really. Um, and if they're getting in the way, just drop them. You know, that's, that's, that's the way I would look at it. Absolutely. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Um, the next question I have here is, uh, when do you use physical therapy or chiropractic support? I know they're both available at the VA level. Can mm -hmm. you talk about what the difference is and when to use what? Yeah. Um, the truth of the matter is that's really something you want to talk about with your clinical team, uh, whether that's your primary care doctor or your pain doctor, or your rehab doctor. Um, the, there's definitely overlap in that both physical therapy and chiropractic teach um, how to move in a more healthy way. So they'll both give you different kinds of exercises to take home. They both will do a certain amount of hands-on work where they're actually moving joints around, moving different parts of your bodies around. The ways they do it, the styles, the techniques can be very different. Um, I think physical therapists also tend to do a lot more sort of strengthening uh, work uh, than chiropractors do. That's why you think of PTs and some of the machines they have in the, in the PT uh, practice. I, chiropractors don't do that as much, although they might make exercise recommendations. Um, but it, it really depends on the situation. You know, if you're talking about rehab after uh, orthopedic surgery, you're going to a PT. If you're talking about chronic low back pain, well, there might be pros and cons to each. And, and um, when you look at the research, uh, there's actually research comparing chiropractic and PT, for example, for low back pain, and they, they come out pretty similar. Uh, not not exactly, but pretty similar. And so it's really about what's right for the individual person uh, and their particular problem that they're after. So I, I think hard to give us a general answer to that. No, I thank you. That's that's a really helpful context, and, and hopefully that helped that individual as well. Um, have you considered using aromatherapy uh, in whole health services, especially for those suffering from PTSD? Um, a lot of times aromatherapy can be really helpful for things like anxiety and pain. Are yeah. there anything, anything you can share on that subject? Yeah. Well, there are lots of folks, lots of clinicians at lots of VAs who are actually doing a certain amount of aromatherapy with veterans, um, kind of um, on their own initiative. So we don't 
uh, formally offer aromatherapy as part of what you would call covered benefits or the medical benefits package. And that's because uh, the policy of the VA says that a therapy has to have a certain level of evidence of effectiveness before we can push it into the medical benefits package. So for example, acupuncture has a very high level of evidence now for treating certain pain conditions. So we were able to get that um, offered as part of standard benefits. We did a big sort of review study on aromatherapy. And although there's a lot of um, beginnings of some positive studies and lots and lots of people who uh, have found it useful themselves, it didn't quite make it up to the policy bar that we have to reach in order to say, okay, every VA should offer aromatherapy. But we do have a policy that says VAs are allowed to offer it uh, if they have someone who's qualified and knowledgeable about delivering it safely. So, um, so bottom line, uh, it's available some places. It may not be available every place because it's not a standard part of benefits. So to some degree, uh, it has to do with your good fortune as to whether you're near a VA where there happens to be someone practicing that. We are interested in helping people access that more because it can be really, really helpful in a lot of situations. And it is actually extremely safe in most situations. Um, but we're still kind of, uh, the evidence is not quite there for us to push it hard uh, all across the VA. But, uh, you know, looking down the road, maybe hopefully, but. Um, but definitely think there's a lot of use for it. And again, even it, as a, a self-care skill or self-management skill, if people get introduced to it and then it's something people can use at home. I know I used it with my kids. One of my kids had a really bad sleep problem uh, kind of in middle school and we used lavender and it was really, really helpful. So um, yeah, I think there's a real place for it. And uh, we're just a little bit early in trying to figure out how it fits in. This kind of segues into uh, one of my questions that I was planning to ask a little bit later, but this seems to be like the better time. Are there any fun details or sneak peeks that you can share with us about some programs or videos that are to come on the Whole Health site? Oh, good question. Well, I want to say we're going to have something about writing and expressive arts for sure. <laughs> I can't exactly when because I, I, I won't be the one to find the right resource, but uh, definitely, definitely more of that. We've gotten feedback that actually uh, Tai Chi is the most downloaded of all the, um, the uh, resources. So I think we're probably going to have to put up more and maybe even find a way to link to longer ones um, so people can actually really um, uh, sort of go to a Tai Chi class, quote unquote, but not all at the same time so they don't, you know, crash our system. But if it's up there and that people can do it at all different times. So I think there's de definitely going to be more Tai Chi. Um, we're looking at the sort of download stats pretty regularly to see, you know, well, what do people want more of? Um, uh, so I know for a fact that's on the list. Um, besides that, I don't know. I think we'll have to keep it a surprise because I don't actually know what's coming next. <laughs> no, that was helpful. That was helpful details and definitely some things to look forward to uh, in that regard. Um, we have a couple of minutes uh, left for questions. I want to make sure we get to as many questions as possible. We certainly have uh, quite a few. Um, so uh, one question I have is, are there other forms of mindful exercise that can give the same benefits of yoga? So this person has a couple of joint issues some joint replacements mm -hmm. um, and their attempts at yoga have not been very successful might be a little bit painful. So um, yeah. are there other forms that maybe have the same benefits? Um, yes, I would say definitely. And um, in particular, I think again, Tai Chi and Qigong. Uh, Qigong is another form of sort of mindful exercise, I guess you could say that comes from um, basically from Chinese medicine in, in, the, in the distant past. And um, both Tai Chi and Qigong have been used very extensively in older people and people with more limited mobility. Um, for example, Tai Chi uh, has been shown to reduce the risk of falls in older people. And so they've got uh, Tai Chi adaptations that are specifically for older people, very gentle, not stressful on joints. Uh, those would probably be my go-tos if you're looking for a, um, an exercise that actually combines 
um, a, a mindful centering activity with sort of gentle physical movement, I, that's where I would go. And um, I think if you can't find something uh, in that realm, Tai Chi, Qigong, on, in our resources yet, so that's another thing. Let's make that another on the list is specifically aimed, Tai Chi uh, is specifically aimed at older people or people with limited mobility. I think if we, if we don't have that yet, we should have that. Um, but I know that there's lots of stuff online that you can find by kind of Googling um, uh, and, and you'd be able to find a lot of resources, things you could try out at home, not just, not just through our site. So that's where I would go. Perfect. There's a couple of questions about um, different strategies if the VA's considered this. One being, um, has the VA considered mas uh, massage therapy, especially sports massage therapy? Um, sometimes professional sports teams use this type of massage with their curriculum to help with healing injuries. So massage therapy is one. Uh, also hydrotherapy is another. Has, has that been yeah. talked about? Yeah, well, massage therapy is actually on the list of covered services now. So um, uh, where it's appropriate for the treatment plan, in other words, a specific injury or a, you know, a, a, a sort of specific reason that massage is the best approach, um, veterans can get massage covered. And some VAs have massage therapists working at the medical facility and some are sending out to community care. But that's already on the list of benefits because when we looked at the evidence, Massage therapy was another one that really had pretty strong evidence for treatment of certain kinds of pain. So that actually made it into the benefits package. Um, hydrotherapy, I think, is pretty widely used in the rehab departments around the country. Not, not every place has the facility, uh, but I've seen some amazing um, uh, uh, hydrotherapy at, uh, sort of gigantic pools and at a couple of VAs. I know I was at Tampa VA not long ago. They have an amazing set up there sort of for hydrotherapy and um, aquatic exercise. And um, so I think that's available at a lot of VAs already. I think it somewhat depends on uh, the, the size of your VA and the kind of equipment they might have available right there. But that's definitely part, part of care already. Absolutely, thank you so much. Um, is whole health open to all eras of veterans, including World War II? Absolutely, 100%. Come on down. That would be an easy one. Um, yeah. <laughs> what about uh, whole health coaches? Are they still available to work with? Yes, great. Thank you for bringing that up. Yeah, I didn't talk about coaching. For people that don't know about coaching, that's an important part of the whole health model because a coach is someone you work with who basically helps you figure out what your goals are, uh, what skills you want to develop, how you're going to go about it, helps you sort of actually hold yourself accountable for um, taking on the new things you want to do. Um, and the health coaching is still available. It's available virtually. Um, and so if health coaching was available at your VA um, prior to this, it's highly likely that it's available uh, via Video Connect now. If it's not yet, it will be soon because everybody is flipping their coaching over to video. And, um, you know, obviously down the road, we hope to still have face-to-face -face coaching too. But, um, but the, a lot of veterans who, who's coaches have gone over to video. Like I know, for example, in Visionaid in Florida, um, every facility has coaches and every facility has gone over to uh, video connect for the coaching. And so um, you need to kind of reach out to wherever it was you were connecting for health coaching previously. And if, the, as I say, if they haven't gone over to video yet, they're, they're gonna be doing it soon. So Great, definitely. And I think coaching is one of those things, let's say unlike acupuncture and massage, Coaching is one of those things that you can do virtually, I think, and be very successful. You know, you, it's a conversation. Uh, I mean, it, it's nicer to be in the room with somebody, but at the same time, I think uh, you can have that conversation online, on the phone, and be very successful. So, Absolutely. Yeah. Um, what kind of um, uh, resources or services uh, would you suggest in the whole health realm that help to um, address things like anger and rage? Yeah. That work better than others? Great question. Well, I mean, I know this is obvious, but whatever I would recommend would want to be in conjunction with some uh, connection with mental health as well, which I know that might be a frustrating answer to some people, but, but I, I don't want to pretend that any of the whole health um, 
strategies can really substitute for some of that. Um, so that's just to put that forward. Um, I would say I know a lot of people who have benefited from uh, some of the mind-body strategies for um, whether it's, it's anger, rage, even uh, um, depression in some people, anxiety, PTSD, um, because they, they give you a skill. They give you a skill to help take the edge off at that moment when you feel yourself losing it. And um, the catch is it's different for everybody. So some people are not at all suited to a quiet, seated, mindful practice. They're just, they're not gonna, it's not gonna work for them. They sit down, they start to feel edgy, they start to feel aggravated, it's not gonna work. They need something that involves moving. Maybe it's running, maybe it's Tai Chi, maybe it's yoga, whatever it is. Um, and so everybody, uh, again, I think the great thing is there's lots of tools to choose from. The hard thing is you have to sort through which one is most likely to, to help you. Um, but I think absolutely, a lot of what a lot of these things do is teach you, we have a word we use, which sounds kind of technical, but it basically self-regulation. So, you know, we all would like to get ourselves to a place where we can choose how we're going to act in any given situation where we don't just react, but we make a choice about how to act. And so I think really a lot of these therapies, a lot of these approaches have that in common, that that's really what they're doing for us is, uh, teaching us how to take that one second pause to be able to make that choice of how am I going to react. And, and I think all these things, I, I know I've talked to veterans, for example, with bad PTSD who felt that the yoga practice was what taught them that they could find that quiet space in that one moment when they really needed it. So I think it's really uh, it depends a lot on the person. And, I, and one way that I've always thought of it as a good place to start anyway, is are you a person who enjoys sitting still or are you a person who hates sitting still? And right off the bat, that can help you at least, you know, know what direction to start in. And then from there, sometimes it's just a question of trying out different things and seeing what you, what, what works for you, so. Absolutely, thank you so much for that. I wanna be mindful of time. We are at the top of the hour. Um, I know we have some questions that we did not cover. I do wanna thank all of you for participating, for sending your questions. Um, we will uh, be sharing these questions with Dr. Klickler behind the scenes. We'll try and get everything answered for you um, so that everyone has all the information that they need. Um, we do encourage everyone that's on today's session to join our Facebook group that is called Hidden Heroes Caregiver Community. Uh, connection, validation, understanding, support, and resource sharing. That's what our community is all about. It is HHCC for short. Uh, so if you care for a wounded, ill, or injured service member or veteran, become a part of our community and find your tribe at hiddenheroes.org slash register. Uh, be on the lookout for a follow-up email from us that will include today's recording, Dr. Quigler's information, and links to the services that were demoed today, as well as a link to join our Facebook group. Again, thank you so much everyone for joining us today. A big thanks to our partners at Wounded Warrior Project and the US Department of Veterans Affairs for supporting this C3 series. And a huge, huge thank you to our guest, Dr. Klickler, who again came on uh, our session for the second time in a month. So thank you so much for showing us all how we can take care of ourselves and use some of these fantastic resources in such a critical time. We hope that everyone found this session informative and inspirational. Uh, we encourage you to stay in touch with our caregiver community and always remember that you are not alone. Thank you so much for joining and have a wonderful day, everyone. Take care.